Hi everyone, welcome to today's session. Hope you're all safe and well. Today's session is a tint and lights demonstration and this is part of our introduction to the fundamentals of hair colouring class for our first year curriculum learners who are in their first year and come to us on a Wednesday. So if you usually attend on a Wednesday, um, this is the theory class that I would have taught you if you would have been in, but some of you were, some of you weren't, some of you were working in salon, so this is just that extra catch-up session. You'll also see uploaded to our Instagram TV tomorrow a short micro lecture on the legal parameters behind colouring hair, also communication and, and testing techniques, testing procedures. Okay, so um, what I'm actually going to do today is I've done a highlights, uh, I've got some highlights working through here, I'm going to explain what I've done and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. So I'm actually taking a half head herringbone technique. I've worked straight across the back, just a few falls across that central panel here, as you can see, through there. I've also worked in a herringbone fashion through the side. So I've already completed this side of the technique. You'll see I've got foils working through here. I've also got foils in the sides as well. And foils on this side. I'm going to demonstrate to you this final section. I've left this out on purpose just to show you the technique that I'm actually going to be using today. I'm using our uh, backwards folding lock technique that we use pretty much on all of our techniques at Michael John and this is really great this foiling technique particularly when you're working a tint application in between. So the purpose of this exercise today is for us to do a herringbone set of highlights and then we're going to do a tint application in between the foils which is actually going to colour the whole head but we're going to colour in two different colours. My foil highlight colour is 7764. It's like a really light violet tone. The in-between, the all-over classic colour is 4.0 with 0 0.81 mixer tone. It's like a really ashy um, dark base, dark brown. Uh, I just want it to be like really flat and really muted and I want it to sort of really contrast against this, the vibrancy of the 7764. So yeah, so just to recap, this is classic uh, tint and lights demonstration. I've already done a lot of the technique. I'm going to take it off the, off the lock. You can see here, that's the herringbone. And I'm going to work the opposite side, going diagonally. We've got the side sections, and we've also got the central panel at the back. And then I'm going to do a tint application, classic tint application, in between the remainder of the sections. Okay, let me just get set up. Hope you're all well and safe and working busy in your salons. This will be uploaded to Instagram TV this, se this session, so don't worry uh, if you um, miss it or if you've got to, some of you might be watching right now in the back room and uh, your next client's coming through, don't worry. I will upload it to our Instagram TV. I'll also make sure it's uploaded to our YouTube channel as well for those that are watching in, on the YouTube channel that's later on. I'm just going to turn around, sorry guys, figuring out my angles today. I think this is better. Ha, there we go, perfect. Okay, right, so I'm going to demonstrate um, the technique. Now this is a bob with a fringe, so I'm working in the fringe area to begin. I'm just going to take this section here. You can see there's already previous highlights through this section, so I'm going to utilise those. I'm going to try and pick them out as much as I possibly can, but some of the darker tones may be picked up in the weave as well. Um, but I quite like that mix, and it's going to really work quite well with my colour application. I'm working a fine weave, so just with the tail comb, going in quite close at the root, and I'm just ensuring that the, the tail comb bobs up and down evenly. So as it bobs up and down, it actually picks up strands, and that's what we want to create. So that's the first section for placing the foil. Now I'm going to work with foil today, and I'm going to work with the shiny side to begin. This is the shiny side. I'm going to take my tail comb and I'm going to place a fold just a little bit further up. I don't want to waste the foil. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that back round and I'm going to place my tail comb again underneath. Now you can choose to use your hands or your tail comb to place your foils. Everybody does it slightly different. So it doesn't really matter as long as it's tight. So I'm going to use my hands on this occasion. I'm going to place my one hand with the section there. I'm going to place one hand underneath. I'm going to twist the section and I'm going to hold it in place. I'm just going to try and turn slightly, a bit more towards the camera. Still figuring out the camera angles, guys, as I'm now back in the academy. I think that's a little bit better. 
I've got my Fromart tint brush and I've got my colour from before. And then what I'm going to do is just about one inch away from the root area, I'm just going to paint the colour onto the foil using my hand underneath as like a surface to paint on to, to protect it away from the face. And then just with the tip of the brush, I'm just going to go through, you can see that's the tip of the brush. And I'm just going to go through just to ensure that I've now paint on at the root area, making sure that the um, paintbrush does not go over the end of the foil because that means it will leak to the underneath section and it will bleed. So that is the section that we've done here today. I'm now going to fold it in half, just pull it to either side like that and then it will actually create that fold that you want to work with. I'm now going to place that just through. I'm going to just tap downwards with your comb. Don't push up, go downwards and then fold in half. Scrape. Now by scraping it like this, what actually happens is you firm the foil so it goes very more rigid, which is really good. What I can now do is using that foil from earlier, once I've lifted it up, I can now actually push this back in. Now you'll have seen this technique if you've looked through the Instagram before, but I just want to always like trying to recap it because it's one of those fundamental techniques that we all learn as hairdressers. And then I'm going to fold either side. There's many different ways that you can do foils. But this is the one of my chosen method because I find that it prevents leaks. For those of you that may be coming towards an EPA, again, this is one of the techniques I most definitely recommend when doing an EPA because it really just makes sure that all this section underneath is nice and secure and that you don't necessarily have any issues when it comes to leaking. I'm going to space these out. I'm not going to sort of do too many because um, I am doing a classic tint application in between. I'm going to weave, so just take the strands and just lift up. You want to ensure evenness of weave throughout, and that's really important because then that will make sure that the colour is evenly distributed. Take the foil, make a fold onto the opposite side. I'm going to place my tail comb underneath on this section so you can see the difference. And then that's the section there. And now I'm going to just with a little bit of tint, just work for about an inch away, centimetre away from the root area, just until I feel it's pasted down nice and firmly. Place my hand underneath and now work the colour all the way through to the middle length and ends. A little bit more tint required here. And then I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to balayage almost like the strands at the top, quite delicately. They also, this is also referred to as feathering, so feather the colour in at the roots and it just lightly tickles them with colour, just so it's nice and even, so you can actually see there, that's what we would actually create in terms of a nice consistent weave. I'm now gonna fold this section. I'm gonna fold it again. I'm gonna lift the section up, and then I'm gonna push it back into the root area. And then that means when I fold it, it's completely firmly, placed into that root area and it definitely won't move. And that's what we really want, especially when we're doing a classic tint application in between because um, we're going to be moving the foils. When you're just doing classic highlights, you may not need to use this technique every single time. And for those that are very experienced, again, this technique may not necessarily be one that you choose to use. I use this technique with my learners because I find that it's the most effective to ensure that the hair doesn't bleed, the colour, sorry, doesn't bleed underneath. So again, just working with the section around about an inch away from the row, centimetre to an inch. Once it's pasted on nice and firmly, you can work through to the mid lengths and ends. And then just with the side of the brush, just feather the colour into the roots. And then make your fold. So yeah, so you need to ensure that the foils are nice and intact at the root and that they're firm because we're going to be lifting them as we place the classic tint application in between there. So this is why the backwards fold technique, the backwards fold lock, can actually lock in the foils effectively at the root area, meaning that when you're lifting them, you're not disturbing them in any way. So I'm just going to go through. 
nice and fine weaves. I'm working with a fine weave. Even though the colour is quite vibrant, I still want it to blend in quite nicely on this occasion. Shiny side up and make a fold. Turn over, place in. Then down onto the section. Make sure it's nice and tight and secure. One centimetre to one inch away from the roots. Just really press quite firmly at this stage just to make sure it's up to place in to where you need it to be because as you start to bring the colour down to the mid lengths and ends, the foil naturally slips away slightly. So you do need to make sure that you've applied the right amount of tension in order to ensure that the foil is not going to slip and therefore you won't get any leakages. I'm just going to make a fold, pinch it slightly, fold again, about halfway, three quarters up, lift up. You'll see the fold here. I've just placed my tail comb underneath and then that firms it back to the root area and I can fold. And it just gives you like, it's like training wheel. I've always described this as like training wheels for foils it, because it's a really great way to learn. And then when you feel your technique is confident enough, you can practice without the backwards lock. You don't necessarily always need to use it. I don't always use it on every single technique because I feel confident in my technique as well but I always find that with uh, my learners I find this works very very well especially when you're training. A couple more sections and then we'll start the classic tooth application. And I'm just working quite a lot of tension actually and I pull the hair slightly as I withdraw the tail comb and that just gives me a little bit more tension to the root area. section through. Hope the feed's coming through okay for everybody as well but if not don't worry I can always re-upload the video to our channel and then fold again. Make that fold and then press and press. And I love the herringbone technique because it looks it's very neat and it really gives you that beautiful finish and nice soft immersion of colour through here. And I'm just taking that section woven nice and fine. Turn the foil, place the tail comb underneath, place it back down onto the section. And then work the tint through. Now if the end of the hair reaches over the foil, just turn it back onto itself. And then that will give you enough room to work the tint through this actual section. And then I'm just balayaging through, just with very small, soft stroking movements through that area. And then again, I'm gonna fold through, fold over, scrape nice and tight. And then I know that's locked into place. Okay. Sure many of you have been doing lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of foils. <laughs> in the salons now that we're all back working and that's just wonderful that we're back making money in the salon. So any clients of ours that may be watching out there, we have some appointments available next week and spread the word to anyone else if you want to come in to have your hair done as well. If it is a colour service, we do require to perform a skin test 24 hours prior to the appointment. So you can speak to our salon coordinator, Lindsay, and she'll be happy to assist you. Just working that section through. I'm really happy with that. 
And I love the shade of violet. It's, it's really quite vibrant. This is from the Velvet Silk range that we currently stock here at the Academy. And I'm just making those folds over to either side. We'll play two more foils and then we're ready to do a classic tint application in between. I remember when I did one of my first trade tests to become a stylist. Uh, this was actually one of the techniques that I did. I did uh, well, uh, the uh, herringbone, it was on longer hair, and then I did a tint application in between and, and it came out really perfect. Sometimes the tint application in between can hide any errors as well, so... <laughs> If for those of you that may not be so confident with the foiling, that could be something you might want to consider if you're doing a trade test or an endpoint assessment. You can do that two-stage colour. Here's the final section. I'm just doing a nice, nice even fine weave. And I always fold the foil to the actual width of the section. And you'll see what I mean but when I fold this one because this one's a little bit finer in width, thinner. So I'll fold it to the width. And this just makes it a little bit stronger for when I'm actually tinting in between. So what I'll do is actually fold them tighter at this area here and also here and there. So as you can see, I'm just going to take her off slightly. Oh, she's a bit stuck. There we go. So as you can see, this one's a little bit smaller. It's a smaller foil because they get smaller because the section's smaller. And that's the herringbone techniques. That's herringbone highlights, half head just with a small panel at the back. You can obviously work two sections further up if you wish, but I wanted to do something that's gonna really showcase more color in the front and less color in the back. So we're now gonna go straight through to our classic tint application. Um, so classic tint application, you'll need your, your tint, your chosen color. Today's chosen color is a 4.0 with 0.81 mixer tone. And this is just going to ash in the colour out and just give it that nice ash, nice ashy base that I'm looking for. I'm taking these foils at the back and I'm going to place a clip in them as shown, making sure that everything's nice and nice and neat and that I can actually start to work the highlights. You can see here the colour hasn't leaked as well because that's a good accurate distribution of colour. I'm going to switch from my tail comb now to a classic tinting comb. So I'm now going to be tinting the hair. I've got my tint already mixed. Although I would recommend to do your highlights, go away, mix your tint, and then um, apply, apply your colour. You just don't want your tint sat there for a significant amount of time. But as this is a demonstration, I just wanted to do that a little bit easier for you today. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got my uh, clean brush. As well, I'm going to dip it into my tin, and I'm just going to outline the perimeter to, to um, ascertain what's front and what's back. So I'm going to work with the, I keep my um, comb in my hand. I dip into the tint as much as I need, and then I start to work the tint through. Just through this top section here, and this is going to help me divide the front from back section. And I'm just holding the hair into place, either side. And I'll work that tint through. I'm going to surface tint underneath these highlights. Um, the reason why I'm tinting is because I actually want to make sure that I remove all of the highlights. 
So I'm going to focus more on the areas where the highlights actually are in this case because um, the depth of this is already a base four as you can see. So what I really want to do is just concentrate on those areas and there's no highlights underneath the occipital bone so in that area I'm actually just going to surface colour through um, not to, I don't have to concentrate too much on, on full saturation in that area. So I've got this section here as you can see I've worked just to section that through. And then I'm just going to do that. There. And then that gives me my front section and my back section. Oh, excuse me, let's kick the stand. There we go, that's great. I'm now going to take a central division down this central section here. So I'm actually going to centrally divide. Now I'm going to work the tent through. Just going on the roots first, and then we're going to pull straight through to the mid and ends in this case. But if you are tenting, you do need to take into account um, any previous colour on the hair, and that's something that you definitely will need to factor in in terms of your application technique, whether or not you might actually need to do mid and ends first before doing the root. And that's only really required if you're actually doing a full colour change, which we're not doing in this instance. I'm just going to now work through these sections here. I'm going to start just this little bit higher up in this case because um, I don't need to colour all of the underneath. So it is the colour I want already. But I, if, I, if I was, um, I would outline this section, but it's not necessary. I'm going to now take sections. I use my comb to take the section. I'm going to try and turn in. Ah, that's better. There we go. Sorry, I just have to manoeuvre myself a little bit here just so you can get the right angle. And then what I'm going to do is with my hand, I then just paint on and paint through. And then of course, just make sure that's nice and neat. Take that next section using your comb and just comb it into place. And I'm working that tint through at the root area. I'll go back through and pull it through to the mid and ends. when ready. Delicate brush strokes around the hairline. You want to avoid any staining, particularly on a mannequin, because <laughs> these stains don't ever come off. <laughs> Trust me, I've tried. So I'm just going to be extra super careful, but I'm quite a neat colorist anyway, if anyone, uh, I'm sure many of my clients would testify for me for that. I'm, hate that stained kind of look. It's really great that technology is actually improving in colour. Um, there's lots of brands now that actually have uh, they're a lot more user friendly in that sense that they cause much less staining than what they used to. Just going to comb that colour through and we'll saturate those ends just a little bit more as part of a refresh. But I love working with the comb some people use the back of the tail of the uh, of the um, tin brush to actually section and actually work from top down and that that's also a great technique but this is um, the most classic way to do it the actual work from the bottom up because hair is most resistant at the nape so it's always advisable to start in that area and also as well you can rinse the back off first quite easily at the back wash so once this area is developed I can then take this off so I can take the highlights off and I can take the tint off whilst um, avoiding the front sections. Just really making sure I keep that nice and saturated. I'm just going to work through this side panel here now. I'm just going to brush that over. And yeah, we've got lots of um, more activities coming up for this course, this new course which we're launching this week. This is our 
fundamentals of hair colouring course and it's for our first year academy learners that attend our curriculum sessions on a Wednesday so you guys that some of you were actually here yesterday and it was great to have you back in the academy and for those that were in salon and um, we've got these activities planned for you on pivot point I'm going to move slightly now to the opposite side I'm going to try and work as quickly as I possibly can because I actually want to show you how to tint mainly in between the highlights but obviously I do have a I have a process to follow <laughs> as much as we can ah, there we go that's great that's the actual way I didn't need to move after all so I'm just going to go through I'm just going to surface tint now surface tinting is where you actually just work on the surface so it's actually very gentle stroking motions and it just sort of gives it a really nice refresh on the top layer uh, I tend to do this on a refresh at the nape if there's been no no um a th a colour fade um, and if it's just a refresh like this because I find that it won't overload the hair with tint but I'll only do that if that's absolutely required whereas these sections as you see where the actual highlights previously exist I will need to work that tint just a little I have to now start working the sections a little bit more uh, finer just to make sure that I am achieving that full sat saturation of that section through. And I'm actually also using my comb to, to distribute the tint through the hair. And I will just go through and just apply a little bit more onto the mid lengths and ends through the technique as well. Okay, so we're about half an hour into this session. So we've got plenty of time. And once, once this is uploaded to Insta TV, you can fast forward and go backwards, and that's what's really cool about Instagram now letting us upload it to Instagram TV, because we can teach you at your leisure. You can watch these whilst you're maybe travelling to work, if you get a bus or a train, or in your breaks, or during your OTJ time, which is off-the-job training, which all salons provide to apprentice learners throughout their apprenticeship. So I'm just really combing this through. Although we are extremely busy at the moment in the salons, so I know that a lot of you will be focusing on that area. I'm just really working this tin through now. I've got a much larger plane to work through as I reach, to utilise, sorry, uh, as I work through, so you can see my strokes become a lot of it more elongated but again I am going to go through and just double check the ends because I think they're a little bit dry tint but I'm happy with the root area typically tend what I tend to do now is uh, bring all this into one just really make sure that this is all combed back and that I don't I've got a nice clear division here And just by working with my hand here, like grasping it, I can now really make sure that that tint is fully saturated onto the mid lengths and ends. Apply some more tint if needed. And then again, just comb through. And this is why I use a wider tooth comb, because you don't really want to be combing colour through the hair with a smaller teeth, because it could actually and um, being comfortable for the client. So now I need to work in between the foil highlights and we work through section by section. I'm just going to use this spare towel now to wipe. We work through section by section, so I'm going to release this to reveal the first section for working through. Now it's really important we work through all sides. So I've worked to the underneath section. First of all, what you want to do is take your tint and go in at the root area here, just on top of the foil, like here, like so. And now work this side. And now take the in-between section, bring that down. And then I work the opposite side. So it's one, two, three, and four. So that's one, two, three, and four. And that really makes sure that you are really saturating that tint all the way through 
those sections. And I'm just using my hand as a work surface, my opposite hand to actually saturate the tin through to the mid lengths and ends. And you know, that's basically it really, but you do need to really make sure that you actually are saturating at the root area. Because you do want that blend between your highlight and also your colour. So that's what it's, so it's one, two, and then bring the section down three and then four. And that's just gonna sort of blend everything together. And again, a little bit more tin. And again, I'm just working through the section using my hand as a board, as a work surface. Could use a board, I guess, if you wanted, if you wanted to do that, but sometimes that might not. I don't think that's necessary. But if you wanted to maybe change the surface slightly, you could. Okay, so I'm just gonna work through in the same fashion. So one, two, three, and four. Lift the section up and pull through. And it's quite quick actually once you once you know what you're doing. It's a little bit fiddly at first. And that's why your foils have to be neat. You can see mine have been neatly, very neatly um, worked through. And they're nice and um, tight to the root area. And that's going to really help you. And this will give you total colour transformation as well, and that's great if you want to do some it. And I would charge, um, charging wise, of course, this would be for a full, full tent plus the highlight charge as well. So again, it's just sort of upping that, that revenue. I'm now going to start working through to the front sections. Ooh, really not, the, uh, not the sign at the back. <laughs> I'm now going to start working through to these front sections. I'm going to work the top first, and then I'm going to work down to the sides. I find that's much easier, so I'm going to work this section, and then I'll work that section. Uh, I'll leave the hairline out to the very last, and then that's the last bit I always tint. Now, the reason why I tint the hairline last is because the hairline is the most um, absorbent part. It's the most porous part of the hair, and it will um, react to the tint, develop the tint the quickest. So sometimes, if you're working with a dark tint particularly, what you could find is, if you do your hairline first and then work in your interior, your hairline will come out darker. So that's something you want to avoid and you can avoid it by doing your hairline last and then you can watch your hairline develop. I've seen hairlines go three, if not sometimes even four shades darker um, than everywhere else um, due to inaccurate application. So I think that's really important if you want to sort of um, work on that basis of that. I'm just gonna actually, oops, I just put my grubby mitts on her neck. Sorry, let me just wipe that off. She's gonna tint all over her. I just wanted to lower her slightly so you could see the technique. Come on. She don't wanna go. No. There we go. That's great. Lovely. Sorry guys, I just wanted to reposition myself there a little bit. That's great because I thought you could see the actual application method here. Uh, I'm working with Fromar brushes. Uh, I always work with Fromar brushes. I love them. They're my favourite. I just love how soft they are and I find that they're um, really easy to clean. You know, one of my biggest bugbears is picking up a tint brush and it's not clean. Uh, so I always work with Fromar for all my services. And uh, yeah, I just find they're really great and I just they work the tint through really well. Just using my hands there a little, my fingers, you see, I'm just sort of pulling it through with my fingers as well to give me that, to make sure it's nice and clean. And just make sure that all the section is there, so with your comb, and actually really work that down. I can't really see, I need to stand on my tiptoes, I'm too short. So I'm just working through the section. Just really making sure that's nice and saturated. Lift that section up. And then work the colour through to the mid lengths and ends. Using your hand as the work surface. Check that you've met and you've got all the in-between areas. Just 
a little bit of a visual check. Sometimes some bits can fall down like that to the side. Just make sure you are working the whole section across this part. That's important to, to do. So one, two, three, and four, like that. And just really, just spend that time making sure that you've really saturated it through. And then just working that section down. Just really making sure. And by working the sections back, it means that when I get to the hairline, I can now very neatly apply around the hairline to avoid any staining onto the scalp, onto the forehead. So I've got my section here. I've got my tint. So one, two, three, and four. And then just really work that section through. Sometimes I go stroke, stroke, and then side, stroke, stroke, side. I find that just helps me really get that tint in there. Some brands are better than others, I find. I've always found Weller sort of goes in quite well, and then L'Oreal, I had to work it a little bit more, I always find, just to make sure I get that. And then these brands like Redkin, where you don't do that at all. You actually have to place the colour on and um, let it develop. You wouldn't actually work the tint. If you do, you actually work the tint off. So it's very important to follow manufacturer's instructions. Um, so like, especially Redkin and um, also Inoa, which is another brand by L'Oreal, you actually, um, you place the tint on like, like this and you would actually leave it like that. You wouldn't actually work it through like how I'm doing with this tint. So you've got to follow the individual manufacturer's instructions as well as the fundamental techniques that you'll learn in your salons and also here at the academy. It's going to work my favorite time that we are. I have to go quick. I've got 15 minutes before it turns me off. <laughs> okay, so I'm just working through. And I'm just sort of really making sure that's really in there. One, two, three. And four. I'm just pulling that down and through. And then, yeah, I'm really happy with that. I can use the whole surface now as the hair's shorter because I'm actually working this fringe area here, as you can see. And then I'm just sort of securing each file, taking a section. Now I'm working with quite a vibrant tint and sometimes that can actually appear through. Uh, don't be too concerned because obviously we're going through with a classic tint application so it won't affect the overall result. It actually just make sure it all blends nicely and that it's all nicely saturated. I've got a little bit here that I need to include. There we go. And this is the final area. Now I'm gonna actually cover from about here down, but I'm actually gonna live. How long have you worked at the academy? Well, actually, that's a funny story. <laughs> I actually first started working for Michael John in um, October 2004. So that's over 16 years ago. Yeah, 16 years ago in October. Uh, so yes, and I've worked for them a number of times. Um, I've worked for many different salon groups as well, and I've been based in London and also here in Manchester. Uh, but I rejoined the company in October last year, and I'm based here full-time now. I've been full-time, I've been part-time, I've consulted, I've done different things. So, um, so yeah, so a long time, actually. You can see I've just left this hairline section out. I'll do that last, that very last once I've done all the other areas. I'm now gonna work down this side section here. Good question. Alicia, I think that is. So yeah, and I've been hairdressing uh, for 20 years, actually. Last month, it was 20 years, June 2000. I'm really old now. <laughs> yeah, it's my big, big passion in life. Uh, is hairdressing, and uh, yeah, so I've got tint all over her neck. Oops, that's because I've been moving her. 
can't do that when you're working on a real client. Uh, it's because I was moving her, sorry, so you'll have to forgive me. The last one? What time are we on? Five to four, right. I need to get a move on, so. Yeah, when we work in the salon, we need to make sure that we work to time-bound standards. So, um, again, I'd probably have about an hour and 15 in the salon to do something like this. Uh, 45 minutes of consultation, highlights application, and then I would work through with my classic tint application following that. Uh, and uh, it's really important to make sure that you do work on your timings as a stylist. Have you always had an interest in it? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, always been um, my biggest passion in life. I actually wanted to be a fashion designer when I was at school. <laughs> and I was obsessed with fashion and fashion design. Then I wanted to be a lawyer. And I actually went to college to study law. Uh, but eight weeks in... Uh, I decided I wanted to be a hairdresser and uh, my parents, my mum particularly, wasn't as best placed <laughs> uh, at first. Uh, Hi mum, I'm leaving law to be a hairdresser. Uh, but when I uh, could start doing her hair, once I got trained, she changed her mind then. And uh, yeah, it's just been my, my biggest passion really. I still I have just a big interest in fashion and um, lo love it so much. And hairdressing is a fundamental part of the fashion industry. And that's the bit I love the most, the, the, the fashion element and how we make people feel. I think that's one of the biggest part of the satisfaction of the job is doing a colour like this could transform the way your client's about to feel about themselves. Um, you know, and it's temporary, of course, and... Naturally, in a world where mental health is an issue, um, you know, I'm not saying that what we do heals people, but if we can just make someone smile and feel good about the way the hair looks, I think that's a great thing and it's something that I really love to do when I work with clients. We have to, of course, manage their expectations at times. It's not always easy to manage your clients' expectations, particularly in the world of Instagram, where clients are seeing these images all day, every day, that are really refined and really beautiful. And sometimes we're not always able to completely recreate those looks on every single client. So part of our job is managing those expectations. Um, but yeah, that's one of the main reasons why I sort of got into it. When will the apprenticeships get started again? Really good question. Oh, I'm loving these questions. Participation from the audience. Uh, when will the um, apprenticeship start again? Very soon, actually. Um, I know our recruitment department are contacting all applicants over the next week or so to rearrange and touch base with you and rearrange your appointment schedule for any interviews that may have been cancelled due to the COVID-19 outbreak because salons are starting to look again and we'll be aiming to launch our next apprenticeship training start date this summer. It definitely will be this summer. I know that, but dates are to be confirmed. Um, this is our first week back, so it's been a little bit of find your feet and see where everyone's up to. And we're actively touching base with all our applicants. And you can call our callers um, directly at the academy. You can DM for the number, but it is on our website as well. I'm just working through this side section at the back very quickly before I go to the other side. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, they're going to start really, really, uh, really soon. And uh, if you want to, if you want to come in, you're more than you're more than welcome. And any of our applicants that are looking to start courses with us, um, we do do your hair for free. Um, if you are aged between 16 to 18, we do require parent permission and um, but yeah if you want your hair cutting or if you even want colour um, we can do that for you so um, and it will be our learners our current learners and it's a great way to actually um, meet some of the learners and and you can sort of ask them questions about you know what's it like and you know what do you think and and uh, how does it work so yeah so that, that's a great thing so feel free to pop in guys we'd be happy to uh 
happy to help you. Uh, I've missed out the hairline here, as you can see, because I'll go back through and do the hairline at the end. Uh, well, I would do um, on a client. I'm not actually going to do it on this because um, she doesn't require it because it's a uh, base. It's the same tone as what I'm working with uh, as well. And it's just going to stain her even further. I mean, I've stained her neck enough. You can see I've got a big patch on it. On her neck, that's because I was moving around. I'm working through to the opposite side. I'm going to go as quickly as I can. I want to aim to finish the technique in full before working through to finish. I'm going to develop it. I will develop it. They would love my hair being to, they would love my hair. Oh wow, that's really cool. Yeah, well, we love anything uh, fashion wise. If you've got fashion color on there, definitely come in. Always looking for models for fashion color. Uh, I will develop this block, I'll blow dry it as well, and I'll put it on the story and I'll create a post uh, for it to go on um, our Instagram as well. So you guys can um, pop on there later on and have a look. Uh, what time are we on? Four o'clock, yeah, I can get it developed and dried before end of day. That's great, I'm just working through these sections nice and quickly now. Going through a little bit quicker as I actually reach my sections. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, feel free to pop in, guys. And if you've got friends that want to come in as well um, and you recommend people, you know, we we're looking for clients right now. So, you know, we, we want new models. We're always on the lookout for new models. Our academy is very different to many others. We concentrate mainly on live models. Although you see me working a lot of the time on mannequins, that's only because what I do is more about the technical, theoretical side. Um, but um, we do do a lot of our work, all of our work actually, on real people. How long have you been doing this? How long have I been doing? Um, well, I've been teaching now for 16 years and I've been hairdressing just over 20 years and I've worked for many different uh, salons. Uh, I've worked for Michael John for a, a long time as well as working in London for 10 years as well. Uh, I was based in Mayfair, Notting Hill. And had some, I've had some amazing experiences in hairdressing. One of the things that people don't actually see and realise about our job is where it can take us. Now, typically, you may sort of think of a hairdresser and think, oh, well, the, you know, the, that local hairdresser in my t local town or, you know, that person that's always worked in that, that same salon. It's not the case, really. There are so many opportunities for a career as a, as a hairdresser. And I've actually gone out there and, and worked with many of them. I've worked in many salons, some really cool, urban, trendy salons. Uh, and I've also worked in salons that are very luxury and high-end in places like Mayfair, where we had royalty as clients, celebrities. Uh, I got the opportunity to do hair on television for this morning. This morning live where I did makeovers with Got Guan and Lisa Snowden. That was really cool. That was a cool couple of days. Uh, my sister is a hairdresser. Oh yeah, oh amazing. That's really cool. Yeah, so um yeah, you tend to find actually a lot of people do um um I, there's so our, our actual business is owned by a family, so it's a uh, husband and wife and daughter as well, so you do tend to find it runs in the family. Uh, so, yeah, I am the only hairdresser in my family though. <laughs> uh, yeah, so a career in hairdressing means that you can uh, really focus on many different aspects. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna just work in a salon forever, you could teach, you can uh, branch out to work for a product company, you could travel around the world, you could work on cruise ships, that's extremely good money, cruise ships, working on cruise ships. Um, so that's a really, really great one. There's lots of opportunities available out there for us hairdressers to, to take. You can have an incredible career. So sometimes people tend to think that it's not and that it's limiting, but trust me, that is definitely wrong. There's so much out there. So much scope, you can work for yourself, you can get your own business. And that's what I really love about it. Okay, now I'm gonna work through this final section at the side. 
Any more questions, feel free to ask. And now we've actually completed. It will be on for approximately about 35 minutes, um, but that can sometimes differ slightly if you've got um, tint already on the hair. Um, my best advice is follow the manufacturer's instructions that you're working with, because every tint develops differently. As you can see, I'm just really neatly working through. And for those that are watching later on Instagram TV, you won't have seen people's comments that come on the screen, like we're seeing right now, we're seeing it live as well. So I hope I did read out all of everyone's comments on them as well. So you guys can understand what we were talking about. But yeah, careers in hairdressing, uh, definitely something I would recommend because I've loved it. But it's not for everybody, it's hard work. That's the downside, it's long hours. Um, you know, sometimes in salon, especially like busy times like Christmas or now, you know, after a period of closure, you know, we find ourselves, you know, we're working long hours and it's a service industry as well. So you've got to understand that we're serving clients and there's certain etiquette and ways that we communicate with others. And there's challenges, mainly in terms of clients' expectations, I find can be a really big challenge. So. That's something that's that's not not necessarily the downsides, but that's the the part of the job where the challenges come from, really. So that's the, the, the most challenging aspect of it. So I'm just going to work this section through. So yeah, like every job out there, you know, there's ups and there's downs, and there's good days and there's bad days. You know, it's not every day we get to do amazing colour techniques and, you know, but then there's other days when we do, when we learn something and we develop and we grow and we actually become, we become better hairdressers for it. We become better hairdressers um, for the challenges that we face in our jobs. Just working through this section now. These are my last few sections ready for development. And again, I would then go back through and tint the hairline last. So I'd go back through and tint that last. And then I'd watch that develop as according to what colour you're doing your hair. So what colour is this? I think that means. Um, so in the um, foil is a really light violet. So it's a 7764. So 77 is the base, which is a medium blonde. And six is violet and four is red. So it actually gives me this really intense, vibrant colour. Then the base in between is a dark base, dark brown four, 4.0, with a 081 mix, which is blue. Now, the reason why I mix brown and blue together is because it makes it nice and ashy. So we're not going to get any warm tones in there. So that's going to help me sort of neutralise it. Because sometimes when you put colour on, it can go a bit warm and a bit gold. I've also got a lot of warmth in this from the previous highlights and I want to really neutralize that out. And I want this really flat, flat dark base, nice and flat, where um, it's gonna contrast against this really sort of vibrant, vibrant color that I'm actually working through. I'm just gonna really make sure that's nice and saturated all the way through that section. Okay, so we're coming towards, oh, just in time as well. I'm just gonna take that last section there. I'm gonna comb that slightly. I'm gonna comb this section through. Okay, so we're coming towards the end of the technique. Whenever you've actually finished your classic tint application, you go through with tint, any stain remover to remove any of the stain marks that you've created. And you also check to see if there's any areas that we need to include. But again, I'm just sort of doing this as a refresh. I didn't really actually tint any of the, the very bottom nape area. I didn't necessarily feel it needed it because it was already the tint, the actual target, target color, the target shade. There's one hair there. So you just go through and you would just make sure that everything's been done. And nice and neat. 
and then the final part of the process would be going back through and doing the hairline so actually tinting the hairline out so I'm just going to take my gloves off because I'm actually going to end the session now so as you can see this is my completed application uh, I would need to actually tint the hairline but I'm not going to tint the hairline on this occasion I'm actually going to leave it uh, there's one little hair there one little hair there I'm being really pernickety now but that wouldn't happen necessarily on a client sometimes they ping a little bit on a mannequin but just make sure you are checking your work okay guys I'm going to develop this uh, I'm going to upload it straight away to our Instagram TV so you'll be able to watch the beginning of the session and take you all the way through to the very end and you'll be able to fast forward pause rewind and um, be able to see all the techniques that I've actually done today. I'll post a story on of the final result and I'll also make a post. Okay, so uh, for those that are studying hairdressing, year one, Wednesday curriculum, you'll receive a link to your new course online, the fundamentals of hair coloring. For those that are doing level two, advanced, that's year two, Monday, your course also goes live, the Advanced Skills Academy, and the advanced one for our level three goes live next week. And these will be a series of online courses that will be taking you through to cover your theory element whilst you're actually concentrating on your practical sessions. Uh, so I'm going to sign off for now and um, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.